Does he know the TV's the other way? Let's review some commercials. Chips Ahoy, there's new Sprinkle Chips Ahoy. Yep, it's that time again to tour down the often forgotten but fondly remembered avenue of nostalgic commercials. Why do so many of them stay with us? What is it about their world of pandering and advertising that makes us so fond of them? Whatever it is, we're gonna review them and partake in their corniness once more. So, seeing how the first one I called will be right back and the second one after these messages and the third one explanation point, this one I'm gonna call... The fourth one. After these messages. After these messages. After these messages. After these messages. We'll be right back. Dinosaurs, come on! Captain the dinosaurs. Ghost from inside the dinosaurs. It's the dinosaur hunt. Chef Boy RD. Ah, good old Chef Boy RD. Causing children around the world to grow up and shout, I can't believe I used to put this in my body. Dinosaurs from Chef Boyardee. Tasty, wholesome pasta. That's a dinosaur hunt. Tasty, wholesome pasta. I can think of three things wrong with that sentence. Thank goodness for new Pac-Man pasta from Chef Boyardee. Now, of course, making famous characters into edible shapes is nothing new. There was Pac-Man, Smurfs, hell, even Tic-Tac-Toe got a pasta. Wherever I go, in Texas and those makes me feel so hungry for my Tic-Tac-Toe. But what some people forget is that for the longest time, they tried to make a game out of eating their products. Yeah, listen. And when you get three X's or O's on your spoon, you win! Cause first one to capture all three dinosaur shapes wins! Why must you turn dinner time into a competitive sport? Wouldn't the more appropriate rules be? Hey kids, if you can eat the elbow macaroni and ketchup we're calling pasta without vomiting it up through your ears, nose, or mouth, you win! Thank goodness for Chef Boyardee! Look at this crazy kid. He is jacked up on the stuff. Just look at that face. It's like he saw Jesus and at the same time decided he wanted to eat him. Wherever I go in sexes and those makes me feel ah. tic-tac-toes, they're so tasty. Chef Boyardee! Well, even if you don't like the food, Chef Boyardee always knew how to give us that tasty amount of goofiness. Tick, 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 tac toes With and without meatballs. Yeah. Hi, Lindsay. Oh, hi, Mama. Oh, God. You can't help but feel that warm, fuzzy feeling whenever you watch this classic. What's new? Nothing. Everybody says I'm too little. Really? It's a McDonald's commercial about a little girl thinking about running away. And for some reason, never questions the creepy clown that's on her neighbor's lawn. I'm thinking of running away to McDonald Land. McDonald Land? That's where I'm from. I hear it's a dictatorship where people disappear. Well, Lindsay, maybe there's some undesirables there holding back genetic progress. Yeah, I hear it's really nice. I hear where you're from is really nice, too. It's okay. Because you've got that basketball hoop over your garage. And your back porch has that great wind chime. I made that. Plus, there's that beautiful field. Where I chase butterflies. Yeah, but to be fair, her basketball hoop and wind chime aren't as impressive as your satanic powers to levitate solid mass and create life from nothingness. McDonald Land is still sounding a bit cooler there, Ronald. Hey, when you're in McDonald Land, who's going to make the decorations for your dad's birthday party? Who's going to be the snowflake in the school play? Ronald. Who's going to feed Mr. Goldfish? Hey, Ronald. I think I hear my mom calling me. Oh, okay. Bye, Lindsay. Bye. Yeah, it all seems sweet and cute until you realize this was a Stranger Danger commercial. <laughs> oh, come on. I can't be the first person to think that about Ronald McDonald. I mean, look at him in this commercial. He's good, but I think he's missing something. Yeah, if a strange man dressed like a clown lures you with magic tricks and, oh, I don't know, offers you McDonald's to go with him, chances are you should probably run for home. Or, as Sonic puts it, You get out of this! Just look at the way Ronald stares at her in this scene. But I think he's missing something. A friend. If someone went up to your kid and smiled like this, Pull her the fuck away from him!
Oh well. As much as I make fun of them, I still love both these commercials around Christmas time. McDonald's wishes you a holiday season spent with the people who make you smile. Brought to you by a company set to sabotage your arteries for the rest of your life. Bye, Lindsay. Bye. So you think celebrity endorsements are bad now? Take a look at what they did to the Cape Crusader when Batman Returns came out. Use alert. Someone is stealing Gotham City's power supply. That's right. Is he gonna stop rioters or capturing the culprit responsible for this crime? Fuck no. He's gonna get him some Diet Coke. When you want a Diet Coke, you want a Diet Coke. Diet Coke, Diet Coke, Diet Coke. I need my Diet Coke. After all, there's just one. I need my fucking Diet Coke. Goddamn traffic, get out of the way! I need my fat free alternative to high fructose deliciousness. Sir, don't you think you're taking this a little too far? Fuck you, Mr. Belladier! Diet Coke! After all, there's just one. But we discover it was Catwoman who was the culprit all along. <laughs> Boy, slow week for her, isn't it? I mean, was this really her grand plan? Shut down the city so she could tease Batman's bizarre low-calorie soda fetish? No offense, Selena, but you could do better. Diet Coke. Just for the taste. <laughs> no, that's the last reason anybody drinks it. The first reason is... Well, now, honestly, because Batman drinks it. He loves it so much, he would literally let the city die just to get the last one. That's probably the best endorsement you could give a product. So, eh, I guess it works. Diet Coke. Just for the taste. Diet Coke! I don't want to grow up. Find a choice record. Another classic collection of commercials we can't forget, along with that wonderful jingle that we can't forget. I don't want to grow up. They're charming commercials and all, but is it me, or does this sound like the national anthem for adults who never really did grow up? You know, those man children and women children who never want to do anything with their lives except play with their toys. I'm telling you, it's all because of this jingle. Don't believe me? The sequel commercial that came out years later proves it. I don't wanna grow up. Got a million Look at that! They're in the exact same location! I'm a Toys R Us kid. They got the best for so much less. You'll really flip your leg. It's like no time has passed. They never left their parents' place. This is their life! From bikes to trains to video games. It's the biggest toy store there is. In fact, the more I think about it, they're probably there even to this day. I don't wanna grow up. Reggie! Uh, go away, Mom! Reggie, when are you gonna get a job? I told you, Mom, I'm a Toys R Us kid! You keep saying that! What does it mean? You couldn't possibly understand, Mom! I'm never gonna have any grandchildren! They just complicate the plan, Mom! The Toys R Us plan! I'm going to watch old home movies of you and see where I went wrong! Toys R Us kid, Mom! Toys R Us kid! The only other problem I ever had with these commercials is that half the toys were never at Toys R Us. You ever notice that? I don't know if it was a copyright thing or what, but half of these products they were advertising were never at the store. Like, imagine you were a Ninja Turtle nut, like I was. Look at these fucking things! Holy shit! I want the life-size dancing Ninja Turtles, please! What? Don't have it? Well, okay, I'll take that gigantic teddy bear that he's bouncing around on. What? Well, how about that game where you bomb the battleship? Fuck you, look through the store! There has to be a game where you can bomb a battleship! Oh, God, this place is an insult to Joffrey the Giraffe! It's not real? I don't wanna grow up! Critic! When are you gonna get a job? Shut up, Mom! Look Chocolatey marshmallow bats. Believe it or not, there was actually a period of time when Count Chocula was a live action character. And would you like to see what he looks like? If you crave chocolate too, ah! I can satisfy the chocolate monster in you. What the hell is that? It's like a silly putty combo of the Nesquik rabbit and fat weird Al Yankovic. And okay, 
That chin seriously needs to be censored. I swear, I'm looking at Forrest Whitaker's testicles right now, and that should not be under the mouth of any cereal mascot. Something happens to Mickey at daylight. Chocolate. The chocolate monster in him comes out for a bite. I don't even know what the commercial's about. It's a monster that wakes up, but when he's fed Count Chocula, he turns back into a kid. I, I, who cares? You can't take your eyes off that image of Robin Williams' face coming out of a Muppet's butt. If you crave chocolate... Yeah! Turn it away! Turn it away! Burn it with acid! Satisfies a chocolate monster in no time flat. The monstrously good part of a complete breakfast. How Chocula can satisfy the chocolate monster in you. You stay the fuck away from my chocolate monster. You know, you're doing a great job. Oh, yeah. I don't know how many people remember this one, but for a while, everybody was quoting it. It starts off with a woman working at her job when her boss obviously starts hitting on her. But you're not using all your assets. With a body like that, you can go places. Sexual harassment makes you feel like less of a person. Ask for the Stop Sexual Harassment booklet at your public library. Be a little more sexy. Hey, we're talking about your job here. No, we're talking about sexual harassment here. And I don't have to take it. Boom! My early 90s perm just schooled your ass! I don't know what it is. There's just something about how direct she is and how almost robotic she says it. No, we're talking about sexual harassment here. And I don't have to take it. Yeah! The funny thing is, sometimes I wonder if this would still work if the roles were reversed. Like, if it was the woman hitting on the man. My guess in all honesty would be, no. For one, kind of obviously this happens more to women than it does to men. But two, men just aren't smart enough to recognize when they're being hit on. We're kind of dumb that way. If a woman is not interested, that's the one we go for. But if a woman is interested, we're blindly naive to it for some reason. If a female boss is hitting on a male worker, he's not gonna catch on to it anytime soon. Dorothy has escaped the castle! Run out! Find her! Find her! Except for you. You come here. Yes, my lady. It's been a long day, hasn't it, OEO henchman number five? Yes, my lady. And you'd do anything for me, wouldn't you? Yes, my lady. Unless someone half your age were to kill you, in which case I would swear an allegiance to her blindly. Okay. What do you say I ride your broomstick for a while? What do you mean? Fill my pointy hat. Don't follow. Pop my ruby slipper. Totally lost. Jesus, do I have to spell it out for you? I want to have sex with you! Oh, still don't get it. I don't have any other words to say. Not one part of that sentence could be interpreted any other way. Oh, I think I see what you're saying. Good! You want me and henchwoman number 12 to hook up? Well, don't worry, my lady. I'm still working on it. Hello, henchwoman number 12. Still not into you, creep! She's so into me. Ah, oh, forget it. You're fired! I'm gonna go hit on a flying monkey. I need a better union. Enjoyably awkward and quotable as hell, we're just talking about a damn funny commercial here. No, we're talking about sexual harassment here, and I don't have to take it. Sexual harassment violates you, and it violates the law. Hey, Kix! <laughs> Remember Kix? The only cereal commercial that pretty much listed every single reason why not to buy it. There's no candy stuff. No sugar sprinkles. No preservatives. No colors. It doesn't have any candy or chocolate in it. Honestly, it's just rabbit droppings that they painted yellow, but the box is pretty. Actually, they went so far out of their way to prove how little is in it that there's actually a commercial that says there's no flavor in it. Listen. No colors. No flavors. Yeah, that might be taken the wrong way, guys. Especially when you're advertising how phenomenally boring your product is. Those are the ones with the little candies, right? Uh-uh. The funny thing is that Kix is the only cereal that tastes different literally with every single bite you take. It's like it gets worse and worse with every single nip. I'm not even joking. You could do a diagram on the natural progression of what every bite does to your taste buds. The first bite demonstrates a tasty, enjoyable experience that seems rather satisfying. Notice how the smile has deteriorated by 50% on the second bite, signifying less enjoyment out of the experience. The 
third bite clearly shows the mistake one feels having placed this product in their mouth. Surely part of the box must have worked its way onto the spoon. <laughs> clearly they've made a cereal out of packing peanuts. This mistake will not be made again. Now kids can get a classic little golden book, free from kicks, with one proof of purchase plus shipping. Okay, did anyone ever actually send in the proof of purchase? I mean, did that ever happen in the history of mankind? I don't know if cereals still do this, but when they were too cheap to put the toy in the box, they had you pay for a stamp and envelope as well as shipping and handling, and have the toy delivered to you a few days later. Do kids really have the attention span for that? Yay! I can get a toy! All I need is an envelope! I'm bored! Ooh, video games! Now kids can get a free Dr. Seuss classic to read, with two proofs of purchase plus shipping. But. To be fair, those books probably would taste better than the actual cereal. <laughs> Kids, kid tested, mother approved. Uh, yeah, let's say it like it is, people. <laughs> Kicks. Kids tolerate it, mother has coupons. Hey kids, there's another turtle-rific edition of- Now we're talking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is just a straightforward ad promoting the first VHS that ever came out of the series. Heroes in a Half Shell. There's not a ton to talk about except for one little portion that might throw you off a bit. The video that reveals the incredible true story. Wait a minute, what was that? The video that reveals the incredible true story. The incredible true story? Um... I'm not a scientist or anything, but I'm just gonna take a wild guess that the insane adventures of four anthropomorphic lifeforms living in the sewer, skateboarding, eating pizza, and fighting the ninja army led by Uncle Phil probably, probably takes place in the world of fiction. It's just so strange because there's no other way you can interpret it. It's not like he meant it to be taken this way or part of some misunderstanding. No, they straight up say it's a true story. The video that reveals the incredible true story. What the hell are we supposed to do with that except draw the conclusion that FHE are fucking liars? The video that reveals the incredible true story. That's right, they're real. And if you don't see them in front of you right now, it's probably because you haven't bought enough of our products. Would we lie? What I like too is that the announcer clearly has no problem straight up lying to kids about it, but he almost stumbles when he has to read what they're actually called. It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. As if halfway through he just realized how stupid this sounded, but tried to keep going anyway. Teenage Mu- oh god, what were you guys smoking? Uh, Ninja Turtles. Still a fun ad, just don't have FHE testify in court anytime soon. Rock, dudes! Now this next one's a classic for two reasons. Hello, my pretty! Oh, I see you're a man who likes donuts, eh? No. Uh, well, what do you say we find your creamy center? What do you mean? Do some hole punching. Don't follow. Let something rise up. Totally lost. What's wrong with you? I want weird wobbly witch sex! Oh, I know what you're saying. You want me and the actress from Game of Thrones, the one that plays the albino dragon chick to hook up. Well, don't worry, I got her on speed dial. <laughs> hey, it's you know who. You're violating the restraining order, asshole. <laughs> she totally wants me. What am I missing here? You still around? Will you piss off? I'm trying to review some commercials. Commercials? Yeah, like this one. And this is what happens when a man and a woman love each other very, very much. They look at porno sites together? You're fired! I don't even know you! With take care of me twins. Speaking of where babies come from, we got possibly one of the most brutally honest baby doll commercials ever. They're called the Take Care of Me Twins. Even that title sounds a little angry, doesn't it? Like a bitter nickname or something. Oh, am I needed by the Take Care of Me Twins? This commercial seems determined to show every stressful, terrible part about raising a child. With Take Care of Me Twins, this is my day. This is my day. Again, not the happiest words to shout during a baby commercial, but keep watching. But this one is drooling, does your tummy hurt? Oh, excuse me, did you just drool on my shirt? I'm rushing around, taking care of these two. With new little twins, they're so 
This is like the most passive aggressive ad I've ever seen. Like saying, oh yeah, you want a baby? You want a fucking baby? Kiss your social life goodbye because this is your day. This is your entire goddamn day. Just drooling, sneezing, feeding, changing, running around. Thanks very much, was that one for me? Just look at the smile she gives. That's the smile of, I'm about to kill these little bastards if someone doesn't take them away from me. Take care of me twins, keep me on the run. But caring for twins is so much more fun. And oh boy, what a rushed happy ending, huh? Hell, 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 but it's really good. Bye! Take care of me twins, make four baby sounds. I don't think I've ever seen a toy that advertised more why not to buy it. But hey, if tearing out your hair to raise a not-human being is your idea of fun, then... Yay! Take care of me twins, keep me on the run. But caring for twins is so much more fun. Take care of me twins, make four baby sounds. <laughs> now you cannot fit two of me in the stress. Ah, yet another series of classics. The setup is that we see what happens to a scrawny-looking kid if they keep growing up while drinking their milk. What girl's gonna go for me with a body like this? Hang in there, Tom. I'm you two years from now, because you're drinking milk and working out. And I've got big news for you, big brother. I'm drinking milk. And in the next few years, it's gonna give me a lot of what I need for strong bones, beautiful skin, and a healthy body. Looking closer at these, have you ever realized how phenomenally shallow they are? I mean, all of them are totally based on looks alone. In fact, one of them even flat out says it. But I'll bet you're hoping for a hunk. And when all my work is done, will you love me just for my body? I can live with that. Milk. It does a body good. Milk. Because personality should come. Never. As long as they show looks are everything, I guess milk is the ultimate ace in the hole. My body! The only difference between me and the guys is this dress. Hey, you can see we turned out just fine. Who is that? That's Jeffrey Geyser. Yeah, he beats me with a shovel, but you could skate on those abs. If you're still the same little creep in a big body, I won't even acknowledge you're my brother. The truth is, if we really could go into the future based on what these selfish little douchebags are like, they probably wouldn't like what they see. You may think I'm a shrimp now, big brother, but I'm drinking milk! Which means I'll grow long hair, beautiful skin, and become totally self-absorbed, meaning I won't need to think for myself, and instead marry a wealthy millionaire who only wants me for my body. And then I'll feel this emptiness inside that only the miracle of cocaine can cure. But that's not enough, so then I'll turn to heroin for an even greater high. And then I won't know what's real anymore, and I wonder where my life went wrong! And then I'll be so jacked up on highballs that I'll try to kill myself in my maid's closet! But then I'll discover rehab and realize it was all part of God's plan. But then I'll relapse and fall right down the slippery slope again! Oh Jesus, brother, help me! And then I'll die cold and alone with my only friend, the glass of milk that started it all. Milk? What the fuck? Maybe I'm reading too deep into it, or maybe they should emphasize the importance of brain power as well as body power. Milk, it does a body good. Oh, Jesus, brother, help me! Oh, good, a commercial from Canada, our friendly neighbors from the north. They're always so kind in everything they do. Oh, look, a baby shower for an expecting mother. Oh, you got the little girl there and everything. Oh, my God, this is going to be adorable. It's a rape whistle. What the fuck, Canada? I mean, talk about an uncomfortable blow to your nads. Is this how you do all your serious commercials? Start off with something innocent and lighthearted and then smash it down into cruel, cruel reality? I mean, it's like starting off an ad like this. You know, a hard day's work doesn't call for water out of the cooler. What do you got there? I got me a nice bottle of mountain water. Cool, refreshing, big on taste, but also big on satisfaction. What do you got there? I got pancreatic cancer. Sheesh! 
Yeesh, I mean, this can't be good for tourism. Who the hell would want to go to Canada after learning that statistic? Do they have that on the entry sign to the place? Welcome to Canada, one in two girls will be physically or sexually abused? That's pretty awkward. I mean, how do you think the expecting mother feels? What is that? It's a rape whistle. Well, Grandma just ruined the baby shower. I'm gonna go hit the vodka. No, wait, can't drink. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Again, great timing, Grandma. I know you mean well, guys, but... Jesus! It's a rape whistle. Everyone rise for the greatest commercial ever. I know it's current, but trust me when I say it is destined to become a nostalgic commercial classic. It starts off with a guy just going into a Denny's to get some pancakes. What follows is a moment of pure and absolute beauty. Red, white, and blue pancakes, huh? What do they taste like? America? Yes! Yes, they do, nodding strange old man! Denny's red, white, and blue pancakes taste like America. My god, everything this country stands for, all the bloodshed, all the cries of freedom, all the wars, all the battles, all the patriotic treasures of the world, all found here in this humble, brilliant piece of brilliantness. You know, some people say they see America in the Lincoln Memorial. Fuck them! Some say they see it in the Constitution of the United States. Fuck them too! Some say they see it in our Purple Mountain's majesty, in the glimmering eye of the honest worker, or in our stars when they see that our flag is still there. Fucking pussy pansies! It's in the red, white, and blue pancakes from Denny's! I mean, just look at this man when he walks in. He is lost and unsure of himself. He is afraid to venture where he has never ventured before. Red, white, and blue pancakes, huh? What do they taste like? These pancakes! These simple red, white, and blue pancakes! Where will they lead him? What will this mean for his future? But then, you can see the old man thinking. Thinking long and hard about it. Do I tell him? Do I let him in on the secret of this nation's greatest landmark? Yes, he is ready. America. America. And you can see on that young man's face that he has found salvation. Sold? He once was lost, but now has found Dennis red, white, and blue pancakes. Tell me, O oh kind, wise sir, what other words of wisdom you have to say about this great nation of ours. America. Yes, yes, good, good. But what specifically about America makes it so special? America. Well, yes, yes, that goes without saying, but could you possibly go into more detail? America. How many fingers am I holding up? America. What color is my hat? America. You can't say anything else, can you? America. And this young man and I have clearly been reading too deeply into your uncontrollable mental illness. America. Huh. Well? I still stand by this as the greatest commercial of all time! Why? America. Oh, fucking America! And who can top that? America. 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 Okay, shut up! Well, thanks for watching my commercial special, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it, and... Hey, whatever did happen to that horny, wicked witch? It's hot in here, and I like you very much, lover boy. Whoa, I mean, the candles, the music, the sexy dress... What's going on here? Don't you like me? I'm your girl! What are you doing this for? I want you. What do you mean? I want your body. Don't follow. I want to have sex with you. Totally lost. Listen here, you bizarre man who has a picture of a spoon on his wall for some reason. I want your balls. Oh, now I get it. Nice catch. Let's see your spiral.
sexual harassment and I don't need to take it. What just happened? Good. I feel like I haven't reviewed anything nostalgic for a while. I'm gonna see if there's any other nostalgic things I can review. No, my son. There is still one movie left for you to review before you return to your nostalgic roots, my son. What do you want, Joe? Joe? I do not know this Joe. I am your father, Joel. Knock it off, Joe. My father wouldn't have hedgehog hair like yours. All right, shut it off, shut it off. But seriously, there still is one recent film you have to answer for. Oh, what? Well, come on, I've reviewed enough recent stuff. I want to get back to my nostalgic roots. There's a certain summer blockbuster I know that you didn't care for, and I'm here to make you answer for it, even if I have to make sure you review it properly all the way through. What? What film is that? Really, you don't know? <sighs> of course I know, it's just I think that- it's pretty obvious we're talking about Man of Steel. No shit, we're talking about Man of Steel. I just wanted to build it up for dramatic tension. Oh. <sighs> well, great. Now how are we gonna leave on a cliffhanger? I'm pregnant. America.